on the water, an adventure around this great brown land and beyond. We're going to have a look at vessels and watercraft, from manpower to wind power, and we'll even crank it up with horsepower. So strap on your life jacket and get set to get wet on the water. Welcome back from the break. Last week we had a chat to the skipper, to the cook and first mate. This week we are going to chat to the, the bosun and the first engineer. So strap on your life jacket and get set to get wet. Alright, we're with the bosun gypsy or the, in the new terminology, the Chief Integrated Rating, which is a bit of a tongue twister, mate. Can you tell us what your role is on board the ship? Yeah, as a Chief IR, I basically supply the labour force and uh, keep the uh, vessel uh, rust free and paint it and, and supply the labour to all different aspects of the ship. Now we're up here in the bosun's locker now, this is your hidey hole up here in the bow. What sort of work is carried on up here? Yeah, this bosun's locker is like our is our workshop at sea in bad weather. We could get up here and do a lot of rope work. I keep all my ropes up here, all the wire, all my blocks and tackles and things like that are all kept up in the store. Um, also the paint lockers up here for, uh, for reasons to keep it away from the cargo. Um, so yeah, this is where we come in uh, to just get our tools to go about jobs, which are lots of different uh, jobs on this ship to do so this is just a workshop basically or somewhere to hidey hole like you say when the weather's bad outside we can get up here out of the weather and perform some sort of inside tasks uh, rope work fixing splicing lines ropes wires and things like that as you said there is a huge variety of work that integrated ratings cover uh, could you run through some of the roles that they're into yeah an integrated rating on board the australian coast means that uh, we uh, steer the ship, that's part of our, our uh, job if you're in a watch keeping position. We steer the ship, we uh, take the cargo to and from, so we will do cargo watches in port. And at sea we have to keep, uh, like I said, the maintenance up of the ship. It's virtually a floating factory and uh, so yeah, there's lots of areas. Integrated ratings also work in the engine room as we are integrated these days. So they work, assist the engineers with the work down in the engine room and they'll assist me with operations on deck and with the work with the officer or the chief mate might want to do and uh, we'll help him in all, all those kind of jobs. And also maintaining a regular watch keeping system as well. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, there's three IRs holding down the 8 to 12, uh, 12 to 4 and 4 to 8 watches. At sea, 24 hours a day, we have uh, men uh, doing the uh, lookouts, keeping watch with the officer on watch during the nighttime hours. In the daytime hours, they'll be assisting me around the deck and other areas as well. Now, how many years have you been at sea, Gypsy? Uh, myself, I've been 33 years at sea now. What is it that keeps you coming back to sea? Is it because you're on shore and you keep blowing the pay packet, or is it, uh, is it the way of life? Yeah, no, it's, uh, the pay packet's pretty good on tankers. Uh, I've done my time in iron ore ships and uh, cargo ships, but uh, I've spent over 20 years now with BP oil tankers out of Fremantle. I think this is about my fifth tanker in a row out of Frio. And uh, I like the bigger ships, the blue water ships we call these, the deep sea, we actually go places. And um, as you've seen around the vessel, there's big, big cabins. We've got a cabin each, a toilet and a shower, and we've got a swimming pool, and we've got the mod cons of a big vessel. The smaller boats don't have that luxury. You can be crammed up a few guys in a room. I like the size of the vessel, I like the lifestyle, and I love the leave we get. What about the camaraderie, the blokes that you're working with 24 hours a day, side by side, does that get on your nerves from time to time? No, nah, not at all. Uh, you, you learn to, d to live this kind of lifestyle, you have to be uh, adaptable to that. I mean, you can't always get on with everybody, but a happy ship's a good ship. Well, I have noticed that it is just incredible. I've not heard one bad word said against one, uh, one of the crew members from another crew member. It is just absolutely incredible to see a workplace where guys are getting along just so well, considering you're living on top of one another. Yeah, well that's just the way it is out here. You have to do that, otherwise it, life's very difficult if you don't like somebody or, or you're just not happy out here, then you don't stay out here. You go back ashore and work ashore if you have to. But uh, this is what we do and uh, this is what we love to do and uh, yeah, we just enjoy doing it. So we're all happy, happy little ship. There's some fairly sophisticated navigational equipment on a ship as you would expect. We're up here on the bridge and let's run through a little bit of that. We're having a look here at electronic chart. This is a radar. We're moving into your main engine control panel with your VHF radio as well as your alarm systems. You've got your helm station of course with the helm and then you've got your backup radar as well as another backup electronic chart.
satellite communications, VHF and another HF radio up here, as well as satellite telephones. We've got a couple of GPS units, we've got an echo sounder, an auto ID system, you've got the ship's clock and of course a weather fax. Now should all this electronic equipment fail, we step back here, it's back to the standard sextant that Captain Cook used for navigation and of course your paper charts. Andrew Marsden, first engineer aboard the British Fidelity, you've got a lot of systems down here that you must maintain and take care of, can you run us through them? Quite correct, Caveman. We have a lot of systems to do with the main engines and the auxiliaries. These include systems such as the cooling water systems for them and also the heating water systems. We also have fuel systems and on top of all those systems we have the ones that we look after, the main vessels such as air conditioning, the refrigeration, the day-to-day -day running like the pneumatics, air systems, even the sewerage system. And I can tell you that's not a nice system when it breaks down. Other systems include the hydraulics for the main steering and all the cargo systems. But these are to do with all the pumps for pumping out the liquid cargoes that we carry and also the systems for inerting the gas tanks on board so we don't have any possibility of any explosions or any nasty things happening. So yes, we have a lot of systems to look after. What is it in particular that you love about this job? Well, it all started with my parents when they gave me a Meccano set, and I guarantee you should never ever do that to your child because I just couldn't put the thing down. And ever since then, I've been fiddling with nuts and bolts and parts and bits of engines and pulling them apart and putting them back together, and I get a great deal of satisfaction out of that. So, of course, this is my environment. This is where I need to be, and this is where I love to be. Let's step out of the control room and into the engine room proper to have a look at this massive dunk. The engine room is kept spotless by the engineers and this makes it easier to maintain the heart of this ship. It is kept clean for safety reasons as well. You've got to love a clean working environment. The ship carries heavy crude oil for fuel which is purified into usable fuel for this massive four storey power plant. The crude oil goes through a settling process, a filtration process and finally a purification process and will purify around 30 tonne per day. This two-stroke turbo diesel engine is absolutely massive and is about four storeys high. It produces around about 13,000 horsepower or around 9,500 kilowatts. The piston is half a metre in diameter and the stroke is two metres long which means I could fit into any one of these six cylinders. This engine propels an eight metre diameter four-bladed prop and propels the ship at around 14 and a half knots. I'd like to thank Captain Rob Spicer and the crew of the British Fidelity. I'd also like to thank BP and ASP for inviting us on board and checking out what life is like aboard a tanker. After the break, we've got some more flat out on the water action, so stick around. Well, that's it for another week. We hope you've enjoyed the show. So whether you're hanging off the wire or winning in national titles or even sailing over the horizon, remember, a bad day on the water is better than a good day at work. See you next week.